Zan, this is so heavy to hold. What is this? Yes, it is. It needs power to pick it up. Wait, you give me a very interesting topic, Aris. What is the topic? Workforce and energy. Oh, hello, everyone. I am Zan. Hello, everyone. I am Aris. So, friends, we are going to discuss about work, force, and energy. Let's start with force. But what is force? Force is used in our daily life to open and shut the door, to pick up things and throw things. Most of the things we do every day requires force. Basically, force is a push or pull. This force changes the shape of an object. It makes an object start moving. It makes an object stop moving. And it can also change the direction where it is going. There are different types of forces. Let's see a look at each one of them. First, let's talk about muscular force. It is the force he used to do every day. To pick up the brush, squeeze the toothpaste out of it and brush your teeth. All the things you do need your muscular force. The second is mechanical force. First, let's talk about the muscular force. You might understand the force it means by just listening to its name. The force exerted by muscles, mostly by us. A person who has stronger muscles can exert more muscular force. We use the muscular force every day to pick up our school bag while going to school, to brush our teeth. Now let's try and talk about the second type of force, mechanical force. But what is mechanical force? Mechanical force is the force used by machines. Like cranes are used to lift heavy objects. And cars use mechanical energy to move you around. Th the third type of force you are going to talk about is an elastic force. Elastic force. You know the meaning of elastic flexible. So remember that time when you see some people taking the bow and an arrow pulling this thread and then leaving it. When they pull it the energy gets stored in that thread and then when they release it the energy gets released pushing the arrow forward. The last type of force is frictional force. What is frictional force? Frictional is force or force of friction is the force that comes into play only when an object starts moving on another object. It slows the object moving on the other object or at least stops it. And it always acts on the opposite side of the object that is moving on the other object. Let's take an example from a bicycle. You start riding it when you pedal it, but when you stop pedaling it, it comes to a stop because frictional force makes it stop. Let's take another example. When it truly slides down from a slope, you'll have to try to push it from the opposite side to stop it. Now let's talk about work. Work in terms of common language means any mental or physical activity, playing the sport you like the most or reading a book. But in science, that is sitting in a place and reading a book is not work. Work is when you pick up something or move it with the help of force. That is work. Work in terms of science means when an object moves because of force acting on it. Now work in terms of science cannot be done by ourselves. We need some things to help us. Like try to open the, the lid of a soft drink bottle. No matter how hard you try, fingers, palm, your whole hand, it won't work. 
On the other hand, you can easily open it by just using a bottle opener. These things make our life simple and easy. That's why they are called simple machines. Now, simple machines are tools that make our work easier. Like suppose in the kitchen, you, the first thing you take for cutting any type of thing is a knife. Without it, it would be next to impossible to cut anything. In this way, knives are the simple machine that make our lives easier. Now, these simple machines are classified into six types. Let's take a look at each of them. Let's talk about the levers first. A lever is a long rod that can be used for cutting things, moving heavy objects and for opening tins. A bottle opener, a scissor, a nutcracker, all these things are levers. The next type of machine is a pulley. A pulley is a grooved wheel with a rope. In villages, people use this to take out water from their wells. It's mostly used to lift heavy loads. It is used in your elevator also. Now, the next type is a wheel and an axle. The wheel is simply a wheel that you know and an axle is a long rod that is attached to the wheel. These when you move the axle, the wheels also turn that helps you move around. Such a mix of things is used in many purposes like you use this in your skateboard, it is used in the steering wheels and in cars and it is also used in door knobs. Now let's talk about the next type of simple machine, an inclined plane. You know what is inclined? Slanted like this. Now, inclined planes can be used to push things upward or lower things downward. It is used in a ramp, a, a slanted road and a mountain. Now, the next type of simple machine we are going to talk about is a wedge. It is made of two inclined planes. An axe is the best example of a wedge. It is used to split things apart or in a simpler way to cut things. Now you have seen those big big cr cranes doing construction works. These cranes are small small parts that help it to do the work it's doing. Those are also simple machines. Last type of simple machine is a screw. Now, a screw looks like some some a nail with a spiraling metal thread around it. It is a special type of inclined plane. The metallic thread is an inclined plane surrounding the screw that is actually a cylinder. It is used in fountain pen caps, bottle caps, and key rings. But from where does energy come from? There are different sources by which energy comes from. Let's take a look at each one of them. First, let's talk about the sun. You know the sun, the massive star in the sky. Sun is the main source of energy on earth. How? The solar energy given off by the sun is taken by plants for photosynthesis. The same is used for a solar cooker to cook the food. Now the second source of energy is wind. You have seen those windmills. When wind or moving air hits them, it moves that generates electricity. It can be also used to take water from underground. The next one. The next, the next source of energy is water. You have seen turbines. When water hits the turbine at high force, 
the turbine starts moving that generates electricity. Dams also use the source of energy. Now the next type of energy is a fuel. You always power up your car with some fuel and an aeroplane, a motorcycle, whatever type of transport you use to move around. This, this fuel is a source of energy for your car that helps it to drive around. Petroleum, cooking gas, oil, coal, all these are good examples of fuels. Now the next source of energy is earth. Earth and energy? Yes, earth can give off energy. It's called geothermal energy. You know that the center of the earth, that is the interior, is very hot. This hotness makes the center of the earth give off some energy. That's called geothermal energy. Now, the last type of energy is an atom. Now, what is this atom? Atom is the smallest particle. It makes everything around it around us. It is like a building block. If you split this atom into two parts, you can get energy. This is called atomic energy. It is used in atomic bombs. Now we will talk about forms of energy. Now energy is there in different forms mechanical chemical heat energy sound energy kinetic energy all these are energy energy cannot be created nor can it be destroyed it only changes from one 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 form to another